I've been waiting for this to come in the mail. Now it has finally arrived. We are going to do a full foundation wear test of the new Urban Decay Face Bond. So if you guys like unfiltered makeup opinions and honest reviews, definitely hit that subscribe button, the like button as well, and leave me a comment so it can get pushed through the YouTube algorithm and we can have a conversation down in the comments. But today we're taking a look at the new Urban Decay Face Bond Waterproof Foundation with up to 24 hour wear. So let's talk about this foundation and let's talk about my skin. And then we will get into the application process, the wear time, all of that kind of stuff. So this is meant to be a self-setting foundation, water, sweat, and humidity proof, smudge and transfer resistant. It claims that you don't need a powder. I'm just like, that's interesting. You don't need a powder with this? You don't need a powder with this. Usually, even with my skin type, which is kind of like dry, I have to have a powder, especially with serum-y types of foundations. This is the new Urban Decay Face Bond Self-Setting Waterproof Foundation. It is available on Sephora currently, and it looks like it's coming to Ulta soon. You can also find it on Urban Decay, and it, it retails for $40 USD and comes in 40 shades. It's a pop-off top. And I have the shade 10 neutral. So you just pop the top off, put it on. The shade 10 neutral is what I have. This is supposed to be a matte finish, non comeogenic, and it is good for redness and it has a medium coverage. It also claims to be good for acne and blemishes and good for dark spots. It's a formula clinically tested to improve skin texture and feel after four weeks. And it also says that it's a lightweight, medium buildable coverage and it's non comeogenic. And we have the shade 10 neutral. So, guys, just to give you a little bit of information about my skin, I am, and about me, and about me, <laughs> about my age, my skin, and everything like that. This is something I love to cover in this video, just so you guys know what to expect out of this specific foundation wear test. I am 35 years old. I currently reside in upstate New York, so we get all four seasons in upstate New York. Today, when I am filming this, it is actually a balmy 50 degrees out. It's actually cold. It feels cold. We are actually projected to possibly get snow tonight. And on the day that I'm filming this, it is April 24th. You would think that in the middle, almost to May, like we would not be getting snow, but we are projected to possibly get snow. So that is going to affect my skin just a little bit. How it's feeling today is actually pretty moisturized, pretty balanced. You guys can see that I do have some hyperpigmentation. I do have some like freckles, I call them age spots, and I also have some blemishes. So we are gonna be looking to see if this is a medium buildable coverage, if it's going to help with the, the problems that I have. I have hyperpigmentation as well, so I do have some hyper red spots, especially on my cheeks. And it's really hard for me to find a foundation that actually covers the red and like doesn't let it show through as much. I am not experiencing any oil today. No oil on my face whatsoever. My skin is actually feeling pretty balanced, pretty, pretty plump. It's not overly hydrated where it's oily, but it's also not super dry. As far as my skin tone goes, I'm actually a fair and I also have cool undertones. So typically when I order a foundation, I either go for a cool undertone or neutral undertone because I have pink in my skin, which makes me a cool undertone. And this said that it was a light neutral. So if she pulls yellow, she ain't neutral. So in typical fashion, we're going to use my e.l.f. Power Gripping Primer. I have found whenever I do a foundation wear test in general, that this is the primer that stacks up against everything. And every single time I use it in a foundation wear test video, my, like it helps, it's the best baseline primer that you can go with because it's not a silicone primer, it's a grippy primer, and it's also very moisturizing. But in every single wear test that I do, I always use this primer because this is my typical primer that I use, like, every single day, but it also is really good because it plays with 
many, many, many foundations. So according to Sephora, this is how I'm supposed to wear this foundation. Skin prep, making sure my skin is moisturized and skincare products have had enough time to absorb into my skin before foundation. Well, my my face is very tacky with my, my primer. It says for a natural skin-like finish, use a sponge. Put one drop onto skin and bounce outward with sponge for a beautiful blend. This is for a beautifully blended natural skin-like finish. It says to build more full coverage, use a brush. Put one drop onto the skin and then evenly distribute with a buffing motion for build a buildability, buildability and control. For max coverage, use your fingers, put small drops directly on your face and pat into the skin for maximum coverage. Well guys, I am not a fan of using my fingers to having to apply a foundation. I just don't like the pigment, but we're gonna do what it says. For a more natural skin-like finish, we're going to use a sponge. We're gonna put one drop onto my skin and we're gonna bounce outward. So, um, I don't know, one drop. Actually, let's just do this. We're gonna drop it onto the one, I guess like that. This is actually a pretty thick formula on the foundation plate. Um, and we're going to bounce into the skin and apply this. Now it has been rumored that this foundation has actually broke the internet because people really like this foundation, I guess. I'm finding with the shade number 10, I definitely thought I got a shade that was going to be too light for me. And I was actually thinking after I ordered this, this foundation that it was actually going to be too light. And now I'm seeing it's actually just a, actually just a little bit too dark, like too dark for me. Um, it matches okay, but like it's definitely just a little bit too dark. When I have my summer tan, I definitely know it'll look better, but it, you can definitely see like an issue with the foundation right in here. Right in here, you can actually see an issue with the foundation right along my chin line. So I'm actually trying to just buff it out with this sponge. Super natural light coverage, definitely the wrong shade. It is barely covering any blemishes though. Like you can still see a lot of my redness around my nose. And this is more like a skin tint to me, whereas it claims that it can be buildable and it's going to look more natural on your skin. So we are going to try and build this up to a medium coverage, like what it claims. So we're gonna do another, I feel like we're just putting way too much on but this is a very thick consistency. And obviously when you use a sponge, it is going to be just a little bit more of a sheer coverage. Like there, there's no doubt about it. When you use a brush, it's actually going to build up a little bit better. But with a lot of foundations, especially for me and my skin tone, for me and my skin type, I really like using a, you know, a wetted down beauty blender. It just helps blend the product better and I get this a better airbrushed look. I do not mind using a brush for my foundation. And typically with like skin tinty type of products, using a brush, it tends to be really streaky on my face. But now like looking at the consistency of this, I mean, it's really thick compared to like normal serum -y type of product. Usually those are very like thin in consistency and using a brush, I get streaks all over my face my face is looking like right now with just the foundation. Now, this is supposed to be self-setting. I'm a bit skeptical about it being self-setting, but I haven't even put on my concealer yet, which we know that like concealer is not self-setting. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a dot right here. And it also didn't conceal any of my blemishes either. Now I did notice that it built up pretty decently well, but it is actually clinging really funny, like right around in here already. So we're gonna have to definitely see if we're able to like even that out just a little bit because it, it didn't even adhere to like right here or right here. And I'm not oily, I'm not over accentuated in any way. I'm definitely normal, normal skin right there. Right here, it's having problems adhering and I don't know why. So we're just very, very, very gently tapping the concealer in, push that product into the skin without having any 
huge issue. I'm already noticing in the mirror that it's over accentuating right in here. And typically I don't have a lot of problems with that, but it's like clinging to something funny right there. And again, it's not adhering to anything right here. And it's actually oxidizing around my face, like around my lips. It's oxidizing really, really bad. This is supposed to be self-setting. Every single time that I try adding, like I try blending it out with a beauty blender, I feel like it's just lifting off of my face. If this is a self-setting product, like it should have already been set down quite a bit and it should have just like, it shouldn't be lifting. At, at least I don't feel like it should be lifting. So I'm taking an F01 from Singe Beauty. This is actually the foundation brush. And I'm just kind of like patting my skin with this foundation brush to try and manipulate the product to like not cling around my 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 mouth and then also to like promote it to cover my cheeks like do I want to add another layer just because it's like missing product right here do we want to do that all right so we're just going to do a teeny tiny little bit like boop again this is really really thick very very surprised at how thick this is so we're just going to dot this onto where we're having coverage issues and we're going to use this brush to gently tap this into my skin here's my expectation with this foundation if it doesn't need to be set with a powder it's going to have a powder dry down finish and it's going to feel lightweight like what it claims so far, the shade, it's definitely just a little bit too dark for me. I'm noticing my, I just look super aged like under my eyes and it's settling into every single like line and crevice that I have. Like it's making my skin just look that much older. So before I try patting this down, we're going to show you guys like what it looks like under the eye. We're gonna reduce the like it's definitely over accentuating all of my fine lines right there. It's still pretty tacky feeling, so I'm just gonna use my concealer brush, there's nothing on it, and we're just going to pat this into my fine lines because it's really accentuating a lot. Like, I'm only 35, but my eyes all of a sudden look like I'm like 10 years older and my forehead feels tight and it's really settling into the fine lines. So it says that it's self-setting and I, it's still tacky after, it's still tacky. So I'm just going to take this powder. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Powder Foundation, technically. Um, this is in the shade 5 Pearl and I'm going to use a Singe Beauty F04. It's a very flat brush. It's good for setting your under eyes. And we're just going to gently, gently, with very minimal product, tap off as much as possible and very gently set my under eyes and my lids with this because it's definitely settling into places where it shouldn't be. And then we're just going to take any excess that's left and put it into the crevasses of my nose. That hopefully will stop it. And it actually lightened me up just a little bit. So it, it looks like I'm a little bit more bronzy on the outer parts of my face. And then, you know, I'm my normal shade, like on the inner part. So typically I do pretty good with foundation matches. And it said it was light neutral. Like light to me is like pasty pale. This is more like a light, this is more like a light medium. Even after just sitting here powdering like those specific areas, even in here, it's still very, very tacky. It's still very sticky. It's not playing very nicely at all. And like I said, usually the e.l.f. Usually the e.l.f. Power Gripping Primer is like the primer to go with, but maybe if you just need a moisturizer this time. Because we've only, we haven't really set down the rest of the face, I am going to use a cream bronzer, and we're using the F05 from Singe Beauty. I love this brush. This is the MUA Cream Bronzer in the shade Bronze, and this will just make me look a little bit more sun-kissed, 
still using the same brush. I'm just going to tap into my Natasha Denona Hypernatural palette and I usually just like mix the product all around. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how to use this palette, definitely go check it out. I'll leave it linked in the eye for you or in the description box down below. But this one has a bronzer trio in it and usually I just kind of like mix these together. But I'm noticing that even with my face and me setting my face with these powder products, my skin is, my hair is sticking to my face because it is still pretty sticky. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of my Pure Nude Baked Blush with a Singe Beauty F06. This is just an angled brush. I love it because this is a very effortless formula and it doesn't over accentuate any of my pores or anything. And I just want this to be a very natural blushed moment. And I wanna see how this is gonna play with just some light products over it. It's looking okay, but I'm noticing that it looks super cakey around my mouth already. So maybe it is setting down, but it's looking really cakey right here and right here. Pretty much any place where I didn't use powder, it doesn't look super smooth. And like it's pretty smooth up in here. It's decently smooth here, but you can also see where there's that, you know, where we had that problem with it not clinging right in here. You can definitely see that the application of the foundation is not as great right in here. And I also feel like it's really blowing up where it shouldn't be. And it's already creasing right in here, but it's, it's setting right here and right here. And it looks very oxidized right around my mouth. Like it looks very dark. Yeah, let's, let's video this from, there you go. So here we have it. Okay, so you can definitely see a ring around my lips. You can see where it's settling into some of the lines in here. And look, it's like over accentuating like right in here too. And it did not conceal this blemish that I have down here. As far as my forehead, I feel like it's really settling into these creases and it just is having adhesion problems like in here. And it's not so bad on this side, but I think that's because of the blush. But overall, it's just... I usually typically, there have only been a couple of products where I've had like huge problems with and that I go see my worst of beauty from 2023 when I did a whole bunch of foundation Fridays, like during that, that round of foundation Fridays, but this is definitely having problems. So I, I can't walk around life looking like a crusty mustache face right here. So we're going to take some pink powder and we're going to brighten up. So this pink powder is the Brightening Loose Setting Powder from LA Girl, and I just put a little bit of it around my mouth because it's like oxidizing, and it's oxidizing like a dark, like a very dark color, and the pink is going to just brighten it a little bit. On camera, it looks nice. In person, this, it looks very crusty right in here. It looks a little bit better now that I've set it down with a little bit of powder, but it just, it looks super crusty. I'm just going to put on some very basic eyeshadow real quick, and then I'm going to hop back on so we can take a look at what's going on with the foundation. It's just going to be something very easy. Here we are. We're back. <laughs> we are back with just some really easy, simple eyes. If you guys are curious what I used, I have some Makeup Geek singles. I just used this shade right here, and then I just have a Luxie Beauty like single on top of that and it's just that pink shade that you see. It is called Pixie Dust from Luxie Beauty and it's just a really beautiful like pink iridescent -y. It reminds me of like a ballet slipper. And let's take a look at what's going on with the face right now. So just to recap, we did end up powdering in my T zone. We did not powder over here. We didn't really powder over here unless you count bronzer as a as a powder. We did not set down with setting powder all over the face, just like in specific targeted areas where I saw it was really settling into my fine lines and wrinkles. But it's also good to note that this is not a self-setting product. And then I did also wanted to make note, there's no powder here, there's no powder underneath, and it is still sticky tacky, like it's, it's wet to the touch. So it's definitely taking a while for it to dry down. After I put on my eyeshadow, I did spray with the Pixi Hydrating Milky Mist. And 
Typically that one also dries down really well on my face and I don't have any like problems with my face feeling like sticky or tacky or anything like that. So I did spray that after I put my eye product on just to set that all down one more time before we went in with mascara. And it is just looking and it's feeling very sticky tacky even on my nose, which we didn't really set down like this part of the nose, but we did set down up here where I have some fine lines and it's looking... We did set down powder right in here just to lighten it up because it was literally giving me like this ring of product and it was oxidizing really funny around in there. So what? it's still settling in really funny right here all around my nose and my eyes look very, very aged. Like it definitely set into there. It set into my, my under eyes and they just look super aged. So I'm going to turn on my phone so you guys can see what it looks like up close even in this camera this is my iphone 15 you can see it definitely started like like that's not the bronzer that was there before i put the bronzer on because i just put like a light layer of it but you can see where it's definitely a different shade and it started oxidizing you can still see the ring here so you can even see where it had a lot of problem adhering to my skin right here like you can just see a foundation line right here and it's just like it's 2:47 in the afternoon you can kind of see it there but I know that that doesn't provide for like a really long wear test but typically I'm up till like 11 o'clock at night so I'm looking to get about an eight hour wear out of this one for the wear test I'm actually going to go pop into natural light and show you guys what it looks like in natural light and then we'll go about the wear test for the rest of the day and we'll see how it looks at the end of the so night. So it's actually an overcast like sky today. So it's not super sunny, but this is the best light to get a good impression of because you're not going to be blown out. This is this is what photographers love to shoot in. It's when it's a little bit overcast, so you don't have direct sunlight. So I wanted to show you guys what this is looking like in natural light. If my f just gotta make sure I don't. Let's just make sure we don't put our finger over the camera. <laughs> So this is what it's looking like in natural light. As you can see, there's like a weird line and like everything feels ultra texturized right in here, especially when you see it in natural light. And even up in here, it just looks super texturized. And you can tell that it's obviously not the right shade because I mean, look at that. <laughs> and I can't blend into my hairline. Um, that's why we use a little bit of powder to try and brighten it up. In so like you can see the ring here too. This There's that little ring that you can see. I kind of look like I have a mustache. That's where I tried like correcting it with that brightening powder, but it's like all along my lips and it's just not setting right. So, I mean, part of that has to do with it being the wrong shade, but when I put it on, it was a little bit dark. It did not look like this. So it definitely oxidized um, under the lights. Like you can definitely tell. And then as far as like my under eyes go, it's definitely very sunken into my under eyes like they just look so dried out and more texturized than normal they my under eyes don't typically look like this like they just look so sunken into the fine lines like if you looked at me right now it's it's definitely sunken into and I didn't put a lot of concealer on I just did a dot and a dot and that one's usually pretty like smoothing brightening all that kind of stuff so I know it's not the concealer so it's definitely something to do with the foundation. Maybe if I had been a little bit more proactive, but for science, we we're trying to see if it set down and was a self-setting product and it's not. Um, this is what it looks like near the back here. I barely put any bronzer back here, just so you guys know, like barely, barely anything. I just put a little bit in here, up in here. So it's definitely oxidized there as well. And it's a little bit too dark for me. You can even see down here cause it matches and I didn't really, like it, it, it's just it's a little bit too dark for me honestly other than that though if I'd gotten a shade that was a little bit lighter we probably wouldn't be seeing as much oxidization because it was it was still a little bit too dark when we first put it on so let's just take the shade out of it but it's definitely oxidizing because it didn't look like this underneath it's it is oxidizing a little bit I can definitely tell because it was not this dark when we put it on to begin with a slidge due to uh, like a slidge too dark but now this is like quite a, quite a few shades too dark for me and it's also with the fact that it is clinging so funny around my lips that's also how you can tell that it's just wearing really funny because it, it, there's like a line 
and typically I don't get that. So it's definitely something with the foundation. So this is what it's looking like. It is about three o'clock in the afternoon. You're in natural light and from far away, it looks nice. Close up, it looks very texturized and in natural light, it looks texturized, so. All right guys, so let's go to the first check-in. Waiting for the bus. It's 3.40, so it's been about an hour, but I just wanted to do a outside check-in. It's freezing, it's 42 degrees, I'm freezing. <clears throat> hey everyone, it is nine o'clock at night, so we've been wearing this for a little over six hours. I wanted to give you guys a check-in. The lighting, I'm sitting in my living room, <laughs> so the lighting isn't half bad. But I wanted to give you guys a check-in. Um, I actually wanted to note that the product finally dried down. It doesn't feel tacky. It doesn't feel sticky. It feels powder dry, which is awesome. Um, and that's even like here where we were having all those issues with it just being like really sticky. So it finally did dry down to a powder finish. Um, I just wanted to show you guys kind of what's going on here. I did have to blow my nose. It did transfer off of my nose onto the, the Kleenex that I was using. So it's not transfer proof at all. Um, not like what it says. And I did eat. So there is some wear around here. And I mean, we're not in like the best lighting, but I did want to make note of a couple of things and just give you guys a little bit of a check in on what I am noticing. So that's what's going on with it right now. I will sit down under studio lights before I go to bed and I will give you the final check-in for the night. We're doing our last check-in of the night. It's almost 10.45, so I've been wearing this for about eight hours. I'd say that's a pretty, a pretty good wear test, if you ask me, for the first day wearing this. I will have like final thoughts on this in a different video. Oh boy. What on earth is going on right in here? It is crusty. It is dry. What is, what is going on? Okay. Well, so after eight hours of wear, I did have to blow my nose twice because I have allergies and I've just been sneezing and like that's a fact of life. But we are seeing like crustiness like around my nose almost as if my skin is like peeling and my skin is not peeling like at all like I don't have I didn't have any problems like that when I was when I put it on so that's interesting that's the big place I'm noticing it like if I if I scrape this away what did it do to my nose that it's just separating so bad right there it's also like obviously it didn't it was not transfer proof the way that it claimed to be so like it definitely transferred off of my nose um I did eat obviously so like it did break down quite a bit in here definitely right in here and then I'm also noticing like that same problem area that we've been pointing out like all day it's like really dry looking and like it's separating on my face same with the areas under here, it looks like it's just wearing down really funny and it's like separating. It settled and it actually creased in my under eyes a lot. So it didn't even settle the way that it should have. It was self-setting and it, it, it definitely, like you can see the lines where it settled really, really bad. So it definitely like adhered to all of that. You can see where it started to really dry funny, like in here and it's starting to like separate on my skin and over here as well it's like settling into all the fine lines um this area looks good like right here everything else just looks like crusty and dry even though like my skin is not super crusty and dry right now it's like pretty balanced pretty moisturized like at the end of the day when I have a wear test with like other foundations it's not like clinging to problem areas and it's not like making my nose look crusty and dry like it'll be gone if I blow my nose but it's not going to leave this like weird crustiness to my face 
This definitely just doesn't wear down like a high-end $40 foundation. I've had drugstore foundations that have like worn down a lot better than this. And I used my tried and true primer. And that is literally like the one primer that with every single foundation, nine times out of 10, it works with it. Which leads me to believe that I don't think it was the primer. I mean, it could have been the primer, but I mean, in the camera lighting, it doesn't look terrible, but definitely close up, like this just looks crusty, gross, like I can't get over what it did to my nose. Like this in here is just ridiculous and how it just like lifted, but lifted even funny. Like it's like a triangle that's like left on my nose. It's really weird. It's like a triangle. It over accentuated a lot of my pores too. So not a very good first day wear test. Thank you guys so much for watching this wear test and staying tuned to the end of this video. If you guys have any comments or questions, definitely leave them down below and I will get to them. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys subscribe before you go. Bye.